This is one of the most underrated amps of the last decade. This is an Engel Retro 2 and it melts faces off, but it's not well known for that. In this series I'll be shooting the Retro Tube out against amps well known for being able to breathe fire to show you how versatile and brutal the Retro Tube can really be. This is part 2, Retro Tube vs Marshall JVM210H. In the first part I compared the Retro Tube to the Engel Savage. If you haven't seen that please check it out, I'll link that video in the description. The Savage lent itself to an in-depth channel for channel mode for mode comparison because their channel layouts are so similar, but the JVM that's not really the case. While the Retro Tube has two channels with two modes each, this model of the JVM has two channels with three modes each. As this video is about the Retro Tube, I won't be touching on all the modes of the JVM, but we'll be comparing the clean green, crunch red and OD green modes with the Retro's first channel in both modes and the second channel without the game boost active. In its fully gained out form, I will be comparing the Retro Tube to the Marshall's OD orange and OD red channels with and without a front end boost. Here we go. Thank you. 
So what do we think? This one's not as close as the previous shootout, isn't it? Here's how I experienced the test. While playing the amps, I enjoyed the Engel more than the Marshall. It felt easier to play and was also a bit less noisy. But listening back during the editing process, I really understood why Marshalls are so popular in studios. I've heard countless people say that they just sit right where they need to be in a mix. And while it doesn't quite sound and feel as thick as the angle, you can't deny that it has a certain presence to it. It still manages to sound big and heavy, even though it feels like, for lack of a better term, the lighter amp when playing them back to back. Another thing I keep hearing people claiming is that angles get drowned out in band mixes easily. I don't agree with that based on this test. Both amps have a distinct mid-range and I did not perceive the angle as being pushed out by the Marshall. I did not feel either dominated the other. Now about the angle's tone button. I did think I might get closer to the Marshall tone by engaging the tone button on the angle, which boosts the frequencies between 500 and 1000 Hz according to the manual. However to me it made the amps sound quite honky, so I ended up dialing the mids back to an extent that it almost negated the effect. Its sonic signature remained that of an angle. What did you think? Tell me your thoughts in the comments. Did you have a preference? Could the angle hold its own against the Marshall? And do you want to see more of this or am I beating a dead horse? I still have the EVH 5150 lined up and possibly the Angle Invader. However, I also have a Dietzel Habit preamp pedal that I intend to compare to the real amp, as well as a Synergy Savage module waiting to compete with the Mark 1 Savage 120 I have. Should I call it a day on the Retro 2 videos and move on or stick with it for another bit? Let me know. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Bye.